Hello, and welcome back to another episode of fucking rant time by myself. And this is a topic I've wanted to rant about for so long because people are so delusional about what is effective and what is not, even though we've had MMA fights and UFC in our culture for more than 20 years, and it's a science at this point. We know exactly what fucking works and what fucking does not work. This should not be controversial. I cannot believe the amount of messages I have gotten from my little comments on other videos that people are upset that I think you can't just train jujitsu at a self-defense gym and be effective fighting. Okay. This is not controversial though. Like, all right. I'm going to piss a lot of people off in this video and I don't really care. It's, I think they're incorrect and I'm, I'm going to throw down. So let's talk about what makes an effective martial art to begin with. An effective martial art is a martial art that has quite a bit of live sparring to pressure test their techniques, okay? And this martial art evolves from this system, and it gets rid of stuff that is not effective, and it keeps the stuff that is effective, okay? That is what makes an, a martial art effective or not over time. Clearly, you have to have some level of innovation where you add more techniques to it, and you see what's going to work. Okay, and you have to have some level of feedback in that people are coming up with counters to this technique and you develop counters to counters. There's going to be a level of meta. Okay, and luckily we have a lot of martial arts like this in the world that fucking are very effective. All right, judo is a very effective system, boxing is very effective, Muay Thai and kickboxing are very effective. Okay, wrestling is highly, highly effective. For takedowns this is the best takedown system there is okay sambo is not that bad all right jiu-jitsu gi no gi doesn't matter it is effective all right we have stuff that works and we know it works because we've been able to watch the ufc like i said for more than 20 years okay so we know what is effective and what is not i'm not exactly sure how self-defense only gyms for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu still exist to this day and are, are making the claims that they make and brainwashing their students in the way that they are with the effectiveness that they are given that we have all this outside cultural feedback okay we have videos and we have examples of what kind of works and what doesn't work okay these Things should not be able to get away with the stuff. that They make claims that they shouldn't make. They confuse their students. I'm going to go into this whole fucking thing. This is a broad topic. I don't know if I can keep this one under 15 minutes. So, we know what works and we know what doesn't work. Okay. Um, the thing about self-defense gyms in general. Okay. Self-defense gyms tend to be very, very culty and very markety. Okay. If I, I've actually gone to a few self-defense gyms, and when I say a few, I mean like quite a few of them, okay? And I've gotten to roll with students at these gyms, and I've gotten to talk with students at these gyms, and the claims that their instructors make and the type of training that they do are just nonsensical, okay? They have no place in the modern world. It is 2021, and again, we know what works and what doesn't work, okay? Pulling guard in self defense in a fight does not, it's not going to work. Okay, I say this a lot, but the floor is undefeated. And you're very rarely purely fighting one person, especially if it's like an, a, a situation you get into at a bar or any kind of out event where the person could have friends. You are not really just fighting them, you're fighting them and their goddamn cousins. Okay, and pulling guard is just not effective. Being on your back is not an effective system. It's an effective fallback, okay? If I suck at wrestling so much that I get put on my back, it's good to know what to do from that situation, and that's where the broad spectrum of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu starts to encapsulate, okay? But is that purely... Like, is, is that where I should be dedicating the most time? Fuck no. If my interest is in winning a fight... Okay, I'm the type of guy where a lot, I just imagine myself going out and getting into fights and I want to be able to win these fights. What should I be doing? Again, you should basically be training to fight MMA. 
you should be doing boxing or Muay Thai or kickboxing. Any one of the three is effective. You probably should avoid throwing leg kicks in a street fight situation. Okay? You should be doing wrestling over judo, but judo is acceptable as a secondary. Okay? And you should know jiu-jitsu for the top control, which is also partially encapsulated by wrestling already. And you should know jiu-jitsu for the chokes and the joint locks, which you're not really going to be doing a lot of joint locks in a street fight. You shouldn't, at least, because people don't know how to tap. You have to break their arm, and most people are not willing to break someone's limbs in a fight. Okay? And also, it doesn't exactly just end the fight like people think they do, because there's no goddamn tapping in a street fight. Okay? So, you should be doing all of that. And what happens is these self-defense gyms, and again, I'm speaking from experience, and I'm speaking from having long conversations from multiple people, from multiple different unaffiliated self-defense gyms, okay? They don't train like that. A lot of self-defense gyms don't really let their students do live rolling to begin with, which, again, that pressure cooking of techniques is what makes a martial art effective to begin with. It is why jiu-jitsu has exploded to what it has because it has a good system to systematically test what techniques are effective and what techniques are not effective and then throw out the bullshit, okay? And that well, that's where competition plays a big role. And again, you're not going to be pulling guard in a street fight, but we know how to manipulate a human body in effective ways because we compete and we train hard and we spar hard, Okay. So, that is very fucking important, okay? And these self-defense gyms generally do not allow their students to spar. Or if they do, it's a very, very controlled environment where they are not... You can tell they're not looking for realistic feedback. They're trying not to scare their students off. So, my entire jiu-jitsu career, I've always felt that these gyms that market themselves as self-defense are not at all interested in you learning how to defend themselves. They're interested in making money. Okay, these gyms generally don't allow cross-training. And if you listen to my last video on how important I think cross-training is in order to effectively weed out bullshit, again, you, you should be cross-training, especially if you are at one of these gyms, but they don't usually let you do that, and they don't let people come in and visit and roll, because what'll happen is your self-defense students will get the shit kicked out of them. They will just get annihilated. And then you'll have to explain to them why, oh, don't worry about this, sport jiu-jitsu, you're only getting tapped out because they did sport jiu-jitsu, but in a real fight, they would not be able to do anything. Like, like the meows couldn't just beat someone up on the street that's some fucking random crackhead. They can. They will take you, I know they pull guard, but they will, they will take you down and pummel you, okay? Someone that is effective at a high level in competition in jiu-jitsu will beat the fuck out of you. Okay, but you, if you're a self-defense school, you can't allow that because you might lose students and that might lose income. Okay, and everyone knows the reason I do this is not to make a lot of money. I don't really care about a lot of money. I've lived in the gym for eight years. I've ate ramen for fucking seven. I don't care about money, so I'm willing to say this shit because you can't hurt me. <laughs> okay, and these self-defense schools are worried about losing their students and their reputation is important. They make their, they, they have a lot of culty rules, uh, which is a whole separate topic I'm willing to go into about like, the, the, you know, the kind of traditional bow on and off the mats, got to call your instructor professor, sensei and all that shit. That's all conditioning culty nonsense. It has absolutely no place in 2021. Okay. But that also plays back into the self-defense nonsense and that they're trying to condition and, and like morph their students into just accepting of all this nonsense. Okay. So the other thing too, okay. That, that's a, that's a topic, okay, about self-defense schools being their own fucking crazy world, okay? I don't think there's as many self-defense schools as there are uh, regular jiu-jitsu schools. It's not the biggest deal. Like, I know it, maybe the ratio is like one to five or something like that, okay, which ends up being a lot of schools, but there is more good jiu-jitsu than there is bad jiu-jitsu, okay? But... The people that are learning good jiu-jitsu are also very confused and very delusional about what fighting is actually like in a real-world scenario, okay? So I've always heard people say, if you're a blue belt, you will just manhandle most people in a street fight, okay? And there's parts of me that agrees with that, and there's parts of me that disagree with that. Okay, I'm going to go into this. If you're, a, if you're a blue belt, especially if you're a decent blue belt, you could probably win most one-on-one -on -one situations with people that are relatively close to your size, okay? And 
just purely based on your grappling experience. Pure, like, uh, obviously, I, I, I need you to know how to do a takedown because, again, if you're pulling, if you're on your back in a street fight, you are just super susceptible to getting goddamn curb stomped or kicked in the head by someone else, getting picked up and slammed, getting your head rammed into stuff. Like, there's just so much damage you will take purely because the ground is hard and undefeated that you don't think about because you're used to rolling on a mat only. Okay? That is whatever. All right, but you also have this um, lack of awareness about how much damage you'll take in general. Okay, I'm again. I, I've said this a few times, but I'm pretty good at fighting. Okay, uh, I've been training since I was 13. I'm 28, so I've got about 15 years of combat experience behind me, and I did not walk away from a lot of my street fights. And my street fights were not like real street fights; they were like bar street fights because I was a security guard. A lot of times I had backup. Okay, I didn't walk away from those without taking some kind of damage. And the damage you take is generally pretty severe. Because again, hitting a floor is unforgiving. Hitting a fucking hardwood table and all of these other things that can happen. Getting kicked, punched in the back of the head by someone's cousin. Getting kicked in the back of the head while you think you have a perfect rear naked choke in. Th this is all very realistic combat experiences that people that have been in a lot of fights have dealt with before. Okay, you're just going to have unexpected things happen to you. Okay, your confidence in your ability to fight is, for the most part, unfounded unless you've been in realistic street fights or you train to fight MMA. MMA fighters generally have a realistic expectation of what a fight is going to be like. They go into the cage knowing that even if they do everything perfect, they will be taking damage. And they will be walking out of that. Maybe victorious, but with a swollen face. Like, that is the expectation you should have going into a fight. You just can't control for the amount of outside influence and factors that are going to play a part in this fight. Okay, like I said, someone's buddy jumping and kicking you in the back of the head. You may think, oh, that would never happen to me. But that's probably the most realistic thing that's going to happen to you. Okay? So, you, you, you should just keep that in mind when you're trying to assess how good you're going to do in a street fight. Again, and I talk about guard pulling. If all you do is pull guard, ever, okay, you might not be as ready for a street fight as you think you are. You have to be the person that gets on top. Going for sweeps while the guy is trying to punch you, or going for sweeps while he's picking you up off the ground and slamming you, that is just not an effective strategy to protect your skull. All right? You are going to take a lot more. You may say... Like, there, there's no fucking time limit in fights. You're just fighting until you are... He's incapacitated or you're incapacitated. And sometimes it doesn't even stop then. And so, again, these fights are very serious sometimes. You just have to... You want to fight in a way that minimizes damage to you. Okay? Obviously, neutralizing your opponent is very important. But your, your big goal should be just not getting hurt. And the best way to not get hurt is to not fight to begin with. But you're, say you're already in this fight... You, as a top player, have a much better chance of not taking a ton of damage than you as a guard puller, okay? Jumping close guard would be absolutely suicidal because you will take that fucking first brutal slam and, again, on the concrete or on the wood, that is it. That's the end. I've never seen anyone get as hurt as bad as I have when I've seen them hit the ground very hard, okay? And since we usually train on mats our entire careers... Most people are just not willing to accept how much damage will be done in those little moments, those little bumps. Uh, even when you're a top player, your knees, like as you mount the guy, your knees are going to hurt. You might have to post your elbows sometimes when he bucks and bridges because he's retarded. Your elbows are going to be fucked up. Okay, You're going to take damage. You just don't think about it. You're never going to walk away from a good street fight without having some kind of injury. Okay, Or just damage in general. So... It should just kind of put the onus on not fighting in general, but again, like, I think these people are delusional, and I've heard a lot of feedback from my little comments I've made in other videos where they're just, like, absolutely positive they'd be able to win a street fight. Yeah, that's the thing. You you might, if you, if you define winning as just not getting pummeled to death, yeah, you might come out victorious, okay? But, again, you are gonna be taking damage. I almost lost the Nogi Pans at Brown Belt. Because I had to fight a guy who had Giants disease at the bar. And I double-legged him. Because what else are you going to do to someone like that? 
and by double legging him I had to drag my knee across the concrete I almost scraped it to the bone and I had the nogi pans two weeks later so if you look at videos of me at the nogi pans I have my leg wrapped up because it was just openly bleeding all the time because it was just it was scraped to the bone okay that's the type of shit you should expect from a street fight did I get punched no did I get slammed no I effectively won the street fight without taking any damage from my opponent but again the floor is undefeated and the floor always gets you <clears throat> so, th that's the kind of thing you should expect to run into, okay? So, fighting in general obviously should be avoided. But again, how, how do we get past the point where we're just like, okay, we we should all do MMA? Um, there's a lot of stuff that gets shown in self-defense jiu-jitsu that could you do it? Maybe, okay? Are you going to be able to do it? No. No, you're not. You are not going to catch their arm out of the air when they're trying to punch you and go into a judo throw. It's not going to happen. Um, a lot of the like escapes that they show when someone is like grabbing your hair or someone is, you know, grabbing you by the neck and they're doing these fucking crazy throws off that. You're not going to be able to do that. The best test to know how you're going to do in a street fight: start standing, no gi with the spazzy white belt in your gym that, you know, he maybe he's a fucking crackhead outside the gym, but he's just that guy, he's just wiry. How do you do with him? Do you easily hold him down the whole time and just completely control it, or do you struggle? If you struggle, you better stop thinking about fighting because you're not going to do very well. That guy is the realistic litmus test to the rest of the world, all right? That's how you know if you're going to take damage on. If you can't control the spazzy white belt in your gym perfectly from standing to submission or to mount, you are not going to win a street fight without taking some kind of damage. Okay? And people don't like to hear that because uh, in jiu-jitsu there's this respect for the belts that is com not, not completely unwarranted but is much, much overblown. I've been tapping black belts out since I was a white belt. I've never, I've never had that respect for a black belt in my entire career and people have thought I'm disrespectful I don't think that's I just think I have a realistic expectation of how much the belts influence the role and I don't think they do a lot I think a lot of it comes down to the grappler someone that's a spazzy athletic white or blue belt is much harder for me to roll with than a technical black belt technical black belts are a dime a dozen they're easy to beat up spazzy athleticism it's hard to it's hard to deal with even if you're very technical okay and that's now imagine if those guys could punch you <laughs> in your rolls when you're struggling to deal with them. That's how a street fight is. Okay. So maybe I got a little... Hmm. So th this is a hard topic for me to organize in my head because there's so many different facets of it. Okay. Like we have the self-defense delusion. We have the, the fact that you should just be training to fight MMA if you're genuinely interested in being a self-defense person. Or carry a goddamn gun. Because guns are undefeated. Knives are undefeated. You know what I mean? Like, you just... No martial artist is going to win a fight against someone that has a gun or a knife. And if, if you really think you have a chance if someone pulls a gun on you, you are exactly the type of person that needs to watch this video because you are insanely delusional. Okay? All of the, the gun defense stuff that you do to disarm someone with a gun, you clearly are fu very confused. Okay, that is not going to happen how you think it's going to happen. You are going to get shot. Okay? So, you have the self-defense people that are confused. Okay? And you have the sport people that are confused because they think they're going to win without taking damage because they train just jiu-jitsu. Again, if the, you can quote me on this statement right here. If you want to be effective at self-defense, you should just train to fight MMA because... MMA is a realistic amalgamation of everything that is effective in combat, okay, put into one sport. And if you feel comfortable going in there and doing MMA fights, your odds of winning a fight without taking a lot of damage are a lot higher. Whereas if you're like a jiu-jitsu person that only does jiu-jitsu and you don't feel comfortable going out there and fighting in an MMA fight, okay, you should not think in your head that you are completely ready to win a fight in the streets, okay, because a fight in the streets is significantly worse 
than fighting someone in the cage. And that's a, like, again, I know that's controversial because I've had fights at the bar that I've easily handled and didn't take damage from because they were, they were drunk and I'm who I am and I train how I train. You know, you just put them in a rear naked choke and it's over. But I've also had lots of fights that you just have unexpected scenarios come into play that you cannot control for. So you need to be doing everything or you need to stop saying that you're ready to fight. Okay, and when we're talking about techniques, it should be in terms of effectiveness. We don't want YouTube bullshit invading our sport. Okay, and that's kind of a no, its own topic a little bit. You have people that show techniques, especially in self-defense schools, but also in just sport jiu-jitsu in general online, that they seem really flashy and they seem really cool, but the odds of you hitting them are exactly zero in a real live situation. Okay, stuff like catching a fist out of the air, that is theoretically possible. You could do this. You you could train this every day for months, and you could theoretically do that. Are you going to do that? Fuck no. You're going to get punched in the mouth. <laughs> okay. This is how the wushu experts got beat up everywhere because they just can't do the stuff that in their head they can do, and that's why live pressure testing is so important because it, a lot of it is resource allocation should you spend one hour catching the fist or one hour learning how to do a double leg. Learn the, please learn the double leg. Okay. And you just weed out the stuff that doesn't work. And this is pervasive in our, our sport in self-defense and in, and in sport jujitsu in, in general, like other martial arts have different things like this where it looks really cool, but the video is not showing high level opponents against high level opponents doing effective techniques. That's also why I mostly watch competition footage to learn new techniques okay and I'll occasionally watch an instructional to learn a concept or maybe to learn some details but uh, I want to see what is effective against people that are trying their hardest to resist it that also have some semblance of skill to fight back okay because if it's if, like, like again if something is working at the black belt level in competition that is because it is effective okay if it wasn't effective they probably wouldn't be able to keep hitting it so then you can, you know, you can safely spend some time to, like dedicating your training time to getting better at that move because it's going to have an actual payoff. Okay. Whereas a lot of YouTube shit, you watch it and you're like, oh, that's really great. Let me just go try that. Oh, this is great in drilling. Let me try to do it live. Oh, I'm struggling. Maybe I'm just not good enough at the move. No, maybe the move just doesn't fucking work. Okay. And that can be a fine line to play. But again, that's why it's, it's an important line because pressure testing your stuff is extremely important. So any gym that says they're a self-defense gym but doesn't allow live rolling, fuck them. They should just not exist. Okay. Self-defense gyms in general and especially like self-defense seminars are nothing but market cash grabs. There's nothing I could show you in two hours that's going to make you more likely to win a fight against a giant guy if you're a girl. Absolutely nothing. I could give you a gun, okay? Even if I gave you a knife, you're probably getting beat down and raped, all right? Um, that's the other thing. People assume size doesn't matter. Size is fucking very important in a street fight. Okay, if you listen to some of my fight stories, I've got a fought bigger guys. It absolutely matters, okay? Self-defense from the girl's perspective is significantly more fucked up than from a guy's perspective because everyone they fight is going to be significantly bigger and stronger and faster than them. Okay, but people will tell them their entire career that that is not what matters, even though that is probably the single most important couple factors that matter in a fight. Size, strength, speed, stamina, technique, in that order. <laughs> like, fuck. How does the girl do in the gym? Most fucking brown belt girls have to roll with the white and blue belt guys at their gym just to have roles where they just don't get annihilated. And this is not at all trying to be detrimental towards women in our sport. I think women in our sport are fantastic. Um, they just have such a natural, unfair disadvantage because of their physicality that the people that teach these self-defense seminars in these gyms, they actually, I, I think they take advantage of that. You know, they, they, they tell women stuff like, okay, you do the seminar, you're ready to defend yourself in a street fight. You're not. You're very much not. You're you're actually like almost worse off because you'll feel more. Okay, so there, okay, there's two factors to this. You are less likely to get raped and molested if you out outwardly are more confident. So if the seminar is making you internally more confident, that's a good thing. 
Okay, you're you're actually less likely to get raped or molested because of that, just purely because of that. But in a situation where you could like walk away or decide to defend yourself, if you decide to engage because of that, you are gonna die. You're not gonna win. It's very unlikely. Okay, either guy guys that are smaller than women are gonna generally still be stronger than you, and again, that matters a lot. Okay, especially if you're training at the kind of gyms that don't let you go hard as fuck. Right. So, I think that these self-defense seminars are cash grabs. I think that they do nothing at all in terms of actually making someone combat capable in a fight to defend themselves. Again, if I, was, if, I, if I had to tell a girl, you need to learn how to defend yourself. This is very important. You're in sketchy situations a lot. I would give her mace, I would give her a knife, and I would give her a gun. And I would teach her how to quick draw, and I would teach her how to use those. Um, outside of that, I would be honest about the fact that you look you're going to need to train for seven years before you're able to take on a white belt guy in a fight because that is the realistic scenario okay size strength speed stamina all of that matter a lot in a fight and by telling these girls they could train for one seminar or a couple months and they could fight a guy you are doing serious detriment to them okay so i covered this is a 25 minute video of me ranting I got a little off topic a couple times, not off topic, but this this is a hard subject for me to organize in my head because it has so many facets that play a role in it, okay? Um, I know I'm going to get flack for this. I think my opinions are very thought out. I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. I've spent a lot of time in combat sports and a lot of times where I've, I've been in fights and I've done MMA fights, and these are just kind of my thoughts. If you disagree with me, okay, I'm willing to hear your counter-argument. But you better have some some good counter arguments because again I'm speaking from experience and a lot of people speak from ignorance on topics like this. Okay, and that's kind of my problem. They make shit up in their head, like oh I would just do this. Have you ever tried to do that? No. Kindly fuck off then. Okay, let's stick to people that know what they're talking about because that is pressure testing and that is how you push things forward. So, uh, big rant. I probably can't even upload this on Instagram. Uh, I'm going to end the rant now before I really start to talk myself into trouble. So, good day, sirs and ma'ams.